Fasting, if you look at the data, the success rate with weight loss and fasting actually matches what you see with a lot of other diets. In other words, it's dismal. In today's episode, we're talking about the five reasons, the five reasons why intermittent fasting can cause weight gain in many people that have tried to tackle their weight loss goals with fasting itself. Maybe that's the first mistake, Sal, is that it's even put in the category of diets. Does it even belong there? Yeah, that's a, hmm. okay. So great yeah. direction, great place to start. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, it's just for people who aren't familiar with fasting. Fasting is literally going for a prolonged period of time without food. So intermittent fasting typically tells you you skip one or two meals or you don't start eating until you know X time or you only eat within a certain time window. And there's a lot of reasons why they say this works or whatever, but ultimately it boils down to it causes people to eat less calories uh, oftentimes when they follow it. And then that's what causes the weight loss. And then in, in, inevitably, like with any diet, Terry recommendation, um, it's turned into a way to lose weight, right? It's a way to lose weight. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm saying this is that fasting's actually been around for a long time. It's been around for thousands of years. If we were to label anything a quote unquote diet or change in, in eating, um, fasting has to be the first ever. In fact, it's present in every major world religion. Um, the ancient Greeks talked about it, but they never fasted for fat loss or weight loss. Obviously, they didn't have weight loss or, or weight issues thousands of years ago. Um, it was always done for spiritual reasons. Nonetheless, it was the first quote unquote kind of diet, right? Like you should eat this way uh, type, of de type of deal. But yeah, I think that's the biggest, that's the first mistake is that it's for aesthetic goals. I'm fasting to lose weight or I'm fasting to change how I look. Um, and I think that's a big mistake because um, it, it's it's not a great way to accomplish those goals. It can help mainly through calorie restriction. Um, it, but it, it in again, in my experience, especially, and again, if you look at the data, it doesn't have any higher success rate than other diets. It's, it's one of those things that's a little complicated to, to talk about on a podcast where I'm not where I don't have a client sitting across from me that I'm speaking to them, right? And their their specific goals because it, it there's a lot of things that it that it does or uh, that you get from fasting that I think are, are positive benefits. Um, and so, uh, and we've talked about this for a long time. In fact, Doug, I'd love to see when we met, when did we write that intermittent fasting guide? That was a long time. Oh, long seven, time. It's changed our, I think our ideas and opinions on that have changed no, a little bit. No, even when we wrote it, I remember why we wrote it. No, we wrote, we, we yeah. wrote it with the same conversation yes. we had and it was literally to teach people how to utilize it, uh, the, the right way. And we wrote that guide knowing that I remember when we first did it. And we talked about all the positive benefits of fasting, but then one of our concerns was how many people are going to use intermittent fasting as a weight loss tool. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the reason of writing the guide was we saw the trend and where it was going and that this is going to turn into something that gets bastardized. Yeah. And we wanted to educate our community on that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't about weight loss. It wasn't about fat loss. No. It wasn't about aesthetic goals. It, it was really like peering into our own personal uh, structure of, of how, you know, this optimizes our day in terms of like the eating schedule. This is a way for us to provide reflection, uh, you know, uh, to abstain and to, to really like ob objectively look at our behaviors, like all that kind of stuff. And it, and it is kind of more along the spiritual lines of like, that's probably the the highest benefit of it yes. besides the fact that you're allowing your digestive system to get a bit of a break uh, as well. And so you, you can also like peer into when you start reintroducing food, like how these different foods sort of make you feel, how you react to them. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's so many um, tools in there in the process of fasting that uh, you could pay attention to uh, that aren't specifically looking at like losing weight no, or body fat. No, and I'll be, I'll be even more clear, right? Following any diet uh, for the primary purpose of changing how you look. Um, it, it's you're, a failing strategy. It's a failing strategy, right? Yep. So if you follow a diet to become healthier, to improve athletic performance or strength, of course, to improve your health, reduce inflammation, your gut health, the, the inevitable side effect of that is you look fit and healthy. Right. But if you skip the step of health and you aim right for changing how I look, 
then diets get really weird. Um, and the relationship to food gets really weird. It becomes about the scale and the mirror. First of all, both lie to you. The scale tells you mass. It's a distortion, yeah. It doesn't tell you what that mass is made up of. I mean, a, a six foot, 200 pound man at 10% at body fat looks very different than a six foot, 200 pound man at 25% body fat. Same weight on the scale. The mirror also lies to us. Um, I mean, how, how many times have you looked at an old picture of yourself and thought, man, I look good, and then remembered what you know, right. back how then, you felt at that time. At that time, you felt yeah. like you looked terrible. Yeah. So both of them aren't the best, right? And so if you're just if you're just eating to change how you look, you're already starting down this path of creating a bad relationship with food. Now, fasting again, we mentioned the spiritual component of, of, of its value. Fasting literally is detachment. Okay, so you can fast from electronics, you could fast uh, from from food, you can fast from sex, you can fast from whatever. But fasting from food is because eating and food is, is is a fundamental part of life. So when you fast from it. The reason why it's a it's a spiritual practice, the reason the reason why it's in these in, in most religions is when you fast from food, you're stuck with your feelings. So okay, normally I eat when I'm stressed or when I'm bored or because I'm supposed to. Right. Well, now I'm not. Okay, I'm stressed. What do I do now? Uh, I got to deal with this. Or maybe you're going to feel more now as a result. Oftentimes we blunt or or numb ourselves with food because the the process of eating can be pleasurable, and so for stressed we eat or for sad we eat or whatever. So now you're not doing that. So you're <clears throat> detaching from this, this desire, this worldly desire, and it allows introspection and allows growth. That's why fasting uh, exists uh, in the first place. And that's where its value is. Now, the side effect sometimes of fasting is you lose weight because you're not eating, right? So, so if you don't eat, especially if you don't eat for a prolonged period of time, you lose weight on the scale. And because the modern world is so obsessed with the scale and obsessed with how you look, then the benefit of fasting was thrown out and it was like, oh, the side effect, that's the benefit mm -hmm. of fasting. In the past, okay, no joke, the weight loss from fasting was like a negative side effect. Like you're going to get all these crazy, crazy spiritual benefits. Yeah, it sucks that you're going to lose weight. But because today is an obese world, we've made this negative side effect. Uh, now this, this main effect, that's what we're aiming for. Forget all this other stuff. It's all about weight loss. So if it's about aesthetics, you're already starting down the wrong path and you will develop a bad relationship with food as a result, and your success rate uh, will be, you know, something like five percent, uh, which is what it is for almost every diet, right? Well, th this is what's interesting about this this episode that we're doing right now is uh, is that there are examples of where somebody doing intermittent fasting actually leads to weight gain, which is not what a lot of people yes. do it, and that's one of them is going into it with the wrong mindset going into it of I'm going to try and do this to change my body aesthetically normally leads to the other four yeah, the behaviors and steps. That. That right. It's the rebound. You're yeah. exactly right, Justin, because if you're going into it because you, you want to look different, you're already going into it with this kind of self-hate, like, oh, I'm fat, I'm whatever. I'm going to go on this path of not eating. So I'm not going to eat until 2 p.m. And so people offer your food, you're around food. No, I can't. I can't eat. I can't eat right now. And why can't you eat? Because I'm fat, whatever. At some point, you are going to rebel against that. Um, and so what typically happens from that is this swing in the other direction. That's why you see this massive weight gain. This is true for all diets, by the way, when you go into them that way, is that you get this kind of rebellion within yourself because you started out wrong. It wasn't through self-care. It was really through self-hate. Um, now, from a spiritual perspective, you know, detachment, well, you're going to get all those benefits. But if it's just from changing how you look, then what ends up happening, oftentimes, again, you look at the data, people gain the weight back. And oftentimes the weight you gain back is more fat than you had uh, when you first went into it. It always is. You, mm -hmm. The rebound effect, and you have to explain that, what happened metabolically, right? So this, you decide to go on this fasting trip to try and lose weight. And so you cut calories and normally in a pretty extreme way when we're skipping whole meals. Mm -hmm. And so the body does what it's supposed to do, which is adapt to this new caloric intake. And even if you see initial weight loss and uh, see initial aesthetic goals happening, happening from it, you now have this new metabolic rate that is significantly lower than what it was when you started this. And so when you do rebound, you don't just rebound, you rebound way harder and swing back the other direction, even worse than what you started off. And this is what I would see a lot with clients that 
decided that they were going to use intermittent fasting as a tool to lose weight, even if they thought they had success with it initially, the inevitable, uh, I'm going to go back to eating food again one day. Yep. And when I do, I've now metabolically trained my body to adapt to this low calorie intake. And so now when I go back to what was normal eating for before, now it puts on even more yeah. weight. Hey, look, sorry to interrupt. We have a fasting guide that breaks down different ways of fasting, how to do them the right way. Um, we're going to give it to you for 50% off because of this episode. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. Now, this episode is brought to you by our sponsors, Seed. Seed is the world's best probiotic, hands down. This is the probiotic that sets the standard. It gets absorbed and utilized the right way. And of course, beneficial bacteria have tremendous benefits for your health. Again, Seed is the only probiotic company we work with. Go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump. That'll give you 25% off your first month's order of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. So what happens is your body pairs muscle down, and then you lose that muscle, along with some body fat, but up to half of it is muscle. Then you go back to eating like you did before. You don't gain muscle back. Your body just captures those extra calories as body fat is what ends up happening. So that's kind of what you're talking about. No. Now, the, the, another mistake people make, and this is why fasting can be quite challenging, even if you're doing this because it makes you feel good, it works with your you know detachment for a certain part of the day or whatever, is it makes it really hard to hit protein targets. So when you look at the data on protein intake and what is beneficial or what is the upper limit of benefit you get from protein intake, it sits at around 0.8 grams of protein per pound of let's say target body weight, okay? But we'll round it up. We'll say one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. That's a lot of protein for everybody, anybody. I don't care if you're a 110 pound woman, it's a lot of protein for a 110 pound woman. It's a lot of protein for a 200 pound man. Let's stick with the 100 uh, or 110 pound woman. That means that she's gonna have to eat, you know, maybe three meals of over 30 something grams of protein. I mean, breakfast alone with something like that would be about what, five or about five eggs. I don't know very many 100, 110 pound women who eat five eggs for breakfast. It's right. just a lot. Yes, so when you limit your eating window, well, now how are you going to get all that protein? I'm going to eat two meals at 50 grams each or 60 grams each, or if you're a man, 200-pound man, I got to eat 200 grams of protein in a five-hour period. Yeah. That's very difficult because protein is very satiety-producing. It can also cause digestive distress yes. as a result. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's one thing you'd recognize right away. Just trying to cram it all in a short <laughs> amount of time, you're really going to have to – uh, increase that amount and and to be able to uh, eat that all in one sitting and digest it all like it, it's really challenging for for a lot of people because even if you do it through um, protein shakes I mean we, we all know like taking that much protein uh, in one sitting and, and that kind of a shake is is really uh, gonna tear you up well the protein is the key macronutrient in the pursuit of speeding your metabolism up so you skipping out a meal, uh, makes that extremely difficult. It's extremely difficult for the average person, period. Anyway. It's the number one thing that I would have to adjust to anybody's diet when I would first take on a client and assess their diet. It just... Most people think that they're consuming a lot more protein than what they really are, and it's the building block of building muscle and building your metabolism. And so if I get a client who wants to do intermittent fasting for weight loss, one of the first things that we can do to, to build this strategy or make this strategy easier is to build their metabolism. One of the most difficult ways of doing that is to limit me on the amount of time I have to get that client to eat enough protein. You just, you don't see them have success with this. It's no. it's a it's a failing strategy. It's already difficult to get somebody with a full 12 hour eating window to actually be able to hit their protein intake, to shrink that down to eight or nine hours and or expect six or hours six or hours yeah. and make them do that is incredibly difficult. And, and rarely ever do I see someone have success with that. And so this is one of the main reasons why I hated clients using intermittent fasting. Yeah, and so um, uh, not only does protein obviously help you build muscle or pervert, preserve muscle, it also helps you burn body fat. Uh, I mean, you heard me right. When they do studies where they control the calories, two groups of people eating the same calories, let's say they both ate 2,000 calories, but one group hit that gram of protein per pound of body weight and the other group ate you know, what the average person is, which does, which is far less. The, person, the group that ate the high protein diet, even if the calories are the same, ends up losing more body fat 
and ends up losing less muscle or sometimes in, in some studies losing no muscle all, or building muscle if they combine it with strength training. So protein targets are important if you want to build and if you want to lose. So it doesn't matter if you want to cut, bulk, gain, lose, whatever, hit those protein targets. And then you just mentioned something. Now, let's say I'm fasting. I have a six-hour window or seven-hour window or whatever the eating window is you decide. Now I got to get all that protein that I could normally spread out throughout the day and I have to fit it in a small window, which brings us to the next mistake that people make, which is they binge when it is time to eat. Fasting encourages a behavior of binging. Mm -hmm. You'll actually find yourself doing this if you fat, if you do intermittent fasting for long periods of time. When you talk to people, from most, my, my experience working with lots of people, intermittent fasting, not always, but oftentimes leads to uh, restrict binge type behaviors. Because they fast and then they, oh, it's, now it's two o'clock, I can mm -hmm. eat. First off, at first they're okay with it, but then the body learns like we got to capture now these they're calories. fixated on that time. That's you're fixated on that time. You're <sighs> you're and especially if you're like I got to hit my protein, yeah. so now you're encouraging it by stuffing yourself in that short eating window. You actually start to binge when it's time to eat, and then what happens? Your calories actually start to climb up, although they were down at first because you had an eating window. They start to climb up because you fit more into a smaller window. And not only are you fitting more into the smaller window, yeah. you're binging while you're doing it. And the I, quality of your food degrades as well. It because, can. Yeah, because you're trying to get all those calories a lot of times. And uh, and two, like you're just anticipating this one window of time to eat. And so you're, you're, I guess like it just sort of, you know, creates this opportunity for it to kind of sneak back in there, all these cravings, you can cram it into this one window. So, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to eat like whole foods uh, in, in a big volume amount in one meal. It, this also reminds me, I rem now I totally remember this was part of our motivation. You guys remember there was, I mean, there still is, there's still a large community of the, uh, in the fitness space of people that promote intermittent fasting and they also talk about um, being able to eat whatever you want in that window. Yeah. So long as you do this in this window. Right, that was popular, yes. And so you would have all these, you know, quote unquote fitness people that were, you know, videoing themselves eating a whole pizza yeah. and going through fast food. And they're like, oh, as long as you stick in your you window right here. Abs. Look at yeah, me. you can eat whatever you want. And so that was the other problem. So not only uh, is the, you already working against your body, body's natural tendencies to want to overeat, capture calories because it's been restricted for a period of time. But then you have part of our community encouraging it and telling people, hey, just stick to the window. And if you, as long as you stick to the window, you can have pizza, you can have donuts, you can have these things. Yeah. Just stick to your window of eating and you'll be fine. And I think the combination of your natural tendencies paired with fitness people telling people that they could eat this way gave all these people with poor relationship with foods permission to go out and eat yeah. this garbage right. food. Right. Well, when you fast uh, for spiritual purposes or detachment, and I use spiritual purposes loosely, but let's just say detachment. Then when you're hungry, you're embracing it. You're looking at the challenge. What do I do? How do I mm -hmm. work through this? You know, what are my issues? When you're fasting because you're trying to lose weight and you know you're going to eat at 2 p.m., you, it's, it's a white knuckle thing. Ooh, I can hold on. Let me look at the clock. I got two hours left. Two hours I'm going to eat. And then you start to fantasize about what you're going to eat at 2 o'clock when it's time to eat. It literally is uh, one of the most guaranteed ways I've ever seen with clients to encourage a restrict binge eating habit, which is already a challenge anyway. Restrict binge, restrict binge. And I don't mean in the clinical sense. I'm not talking about, you know, uh, when, when people have bulimia. I mean, just, you know, you just, you either don't eat or you just eat too much or beyond comfort. Uh, that's a problem with all diet culture. You see that anyway, when people are on the diet, off the diet, on the diet, off the diet, it looks more like restrict binge. This is taking it to the next level because it's literally no food, food, no food, food. Yeah. And what you don't want to do is develop this behavior around food where it's nothing or everything. Yeah. That is a very tough behavior to break. And if you already find yourself uh, with that type or that tendency, then fasting is terrible. If I have somebody who tells me they have a tendency to restrict and binge, um, fasting is the last place I'm going to point them because that's going to be the road towards real eating disorder or getting close to it. So it definitely encourages that in many cases. And when that happens... What you end up finding are people in restricted eating windows gaining body weight and actually yeah. gaining body fat as a result. Man, I mean, even just like eating, you're going to be eating so much quicker. 
Like it's just <laughs> going like spreading out throughout the day, taking your time, allowing the natural course of digestion to happen and like chewing your food appropriately. Like if all of your volume of food is just in this one window, like it's, it turns into that sort of like speed element that could then lead into a binge situation. Right. You know? Here's another thing too. And, and this is what you'll hear functional medicine practitioners talk about with fasting. If a functional medicine practitioner takes on a patient who's exhibiting signs of HPA axis dysfunction or, or what we used to call back in the day, they don't call it this anymore, but we used to call it adrenal fatigue, okay? They changed the name because that's not what's happening, but symptoms are like fatigue, um, uh, you're going to have you know cold, hot intolerance, strange cravings, insomnia, libido's affected. Basically, think of somebody who has too much stress in their life, okay? Signs of too much stress. A functional medicine practitioner will not let them fast. Unless it's part of a of a gut health protocol, which is a completely different topic, they'll tell them not to fast. Now, why is that? Fasting in itself, going for prolonged periods without food, uh, is somewhat of a stress on the body. And I say somewhat because it's not always, obviously, when you sleep. But in the case of the overstressed individual, it is a stress on the body. Here's what fasting does. It causes cortisol to go up. So your cortisol goes up. You produce more catecholamines. Catecholamines are epinephrine, norepinephrine. They feel good, but right. But these are like kind of stress things that come out of adrenaline. Um, now you ask yourself why. Well, the evolutionary explanation that many people have put forth around this is: if you go for long periods of time without food, your body is picking up these stress hormones to give you energy to get you to find more food. Yeah. And so, and now a lot of people who fast uh, often like this feeling, and I get it because you feel kind of wired and energized. But if you're already stressed and you're pushing fasting, you will get yourself in a, in a bad place. In fact, I've had uh, had female clients who were like this. These are the kind of people that overtrain. They work out too much. Uh, they're already overstressed with work yeah. and family life. Then they add intermittent fasting and they'll get, they'll get symptoms like hair loss. They'll get symptoms like destroyed and crushed libido. Uh, their nails will start hormones to get- Hormones are out of balance. Their hormones are out of balance. But this is more, I, I, I would see this more This often is more with, common than you would think. Yes. Yeah. I, in fact, if you've been listening to this show long enough, you've probably heard us multiple times uh, recommend to a caller- uh, stop fasting. Why are you fasting? Yes. Because they're doing all this other stuff, right? They're calling in and they have all these signs that you just pointed out. Sleep is off, hormones are off, hair, nails, things like that. They've noticed all these things and they're telling us their workout, their stuff, that everything they got going on at work, their personal life. And then they're also fasting. You know, they're also doing their intermittent Stress fasting. Bucket is just pouring. And we're like, why? why? What do you, first of all, get rid of that. There's no reason for you to not do that. And I just, I think that people think that restricting from bad quote unquote bad food is a healthy good thing when they don't realize that dieting giving your body less calories than it needs to maintain is a stress yeah and, mm -hmm. and, and re taking out bad foods is good but you got to replace them with good foods right <laughs> yeah. i mean it's it's very similar to like again working out the same thing too there is there is a a perfect dose there is the right amount it can be abused like anything else exercise is a stress it's a very yeah. good one and it's and it sends a signal for a lot of good things to happen but it can absolutely be abused Eating less bad food, definitely a positive thing for you, but too much in one direction can also cause a lot of stress and other issues too. So people just don't look at it as that. They think of it as a, I'm abstaining from eating bad food, therefore it must be all positive. And that's not true in the context of somebody who has a life full of all kinds of stress. And then in addition to that, they're restricting like yeah, this. Yeah, and I'll, 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 you know, I'll put a little asterisk here. It's not even looked at as I'm avoiding bad food. It's I'm avoiding food. Period. Yeah. It's just I'm not eating yeah. during this period of time. So it's not even about the bad or good food. It's just I'm not eating. You know, an overly stressed body or a body that is taking on more stress than it can recover and adapt from is a pro-fat, anti-muscle environment. Your body, when it's, when it's overcome with stress, is looking to preserve itself. And two of the ways it does this is by lowering its metabolic rate, so it pairs muscle down. So it's anti-muscle. Too much stress is anti-muscle. It's also pro-body fat. It's pro-fat because fat is an insurance policy. Mm -hmm. When you're storing, if 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 all of so us I were, would. if we were all eight percent body fat and shredded, and then there was a stressful famine that happened, we'd be dead, right? <laughs> yeah, we were the first ones dead. Yeah, you you, you, <laughs> you want all that insurance on you. You want uh, fifty extra pounds of body fat. It's like a bank account for your body for energy and some nutrients in case of famine or 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 whatever. So, so an overstressed situation is anti-muscle pro-fat. So if you're already overstressed and then you fast on top of that, 
it, not only are you not going to get to your goals any faster, you actually go backwards. You're going to encourage this pro-fat, need to store body fat, and let's get rid of muscle to slow down our metabolism. Yeah. Now, the last one is this, and this is what I see most often, I would say, is that when the eating window comes up, uh, because they've fasted for so long, how many hours or whatever, <clears throat> it tends to promote the eating of garbage. And in, 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 this is what tends to happen. People, And then initially they lose weight by doing this anyway. Oh my God, I had pizza last night, but I had this you know four hour eating window and I'm losing weight, not realizing that their overall calories are lower. Well, here's what happens when you continue to do this. First off, you're not hitting your protein. You're not eating, eating the right nutrients you need. So health yeah, isn't necessarily- nourished. Not necessarily good for you uh, in, in most senses. But here's what starts to happen. Your body, you know, hyper palatable, uh, heavily processed foods, you can eat more of them than you can of whole natural foods. And your body learns to get you to eat even more of them. And what ends up happening over a, a certain period of time is you eat more and more garbage within this period of four hours or five hours. And then you end up eating more calories than you burn. You end up gaining body fat as a result because you're still eating garbage. You're eating garbage. It just happens to be in a shorter window of time. I mean, I, I, I know there's a lot of you know, responsibility and accountability on the individual, right? Who, who chose to do those things. But I really blame a lot of this on our, on our space, on yeah. professionals, because fasting, uh, like many other things that take off in the fitness space, uh, is very marketable. It's like when we talk about like the, the, some of the most famous diets that ever went viral and carried on for decades are the ones that have the, the most basic, easy run. Yeah. Nothing gets the easier than of yeah, it. Yeah, the simplicity yeah. of it, right? Of the, just eat, eat want, meat, yeah. just eat this, or only, you know, the, the peanut butter diet, the celery diet, the, <laughs> yeah. you know, this like these things that like people are like, oh, I could follow Cayenne that. Pepper That's diet. so yeah. basic, right? That's so easy. Nothing gets easier than just don't eat. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to follow anything else, just don't eat. That's all you have to like. So it's so marketable to do that. And then what they get to what they would pair with that is also just don't eat on these windows and then eat whatever you want. There's eat no your, other rules. There's no other rules. Yeah. Well, and so there it, it it appealed to so many people that struggle with weight, like, oh my God, this is so easy to follow. And in addition to that, they're not telling me I can't have my donuts, I can't have my ice cream, I can't have my Oreo cookies. And so, and I just think so many fitness professionals double and triple down on this because so many clients were signing up for it. Like, oh my God, this is awesome. I could totally follow this diet. And initially, when you take somebody who eats bad food all day long and you only give them six hours to eat bad food, they initially do lose weight because it's, uh, you know, a third yeah. of the food that we're eating before. Yeah. But it's a it's a it's a losing battle. Eventually, that metabolism slows down. Eventually, the body pairs down muscle. It's not getting enough protein, and then you're in this even shittier position than when you initially started this. And then all the stuff comes back yeah. on, and some. And I'll, look, I'll close it with this: like aside from the potential detachment benefits, the calorie restriction that comes from fasting will affect you in roughly the same ways the calorie restriction from any diet will affect you you're going to initially lose weight. However, you're now trying to eat a balanced diet in a shorter time window, and you're also dealing with a time window of no food whatsoever. And unless it's for personal growth, if it's just for aesthetics, that turns into potentially, and often does turn into a restrict binge approach. So it's really no better than any other kind of black or white diet. In fact, it's harder to do for a lot of people. So those people watching right now are like, I lost tons of weight fasting, whatever. You would still lose that weight doing it other ways. In fact, I would say it would be a lot easier and we can develop better relationships with food that are more long lasting without having to eat within a, such a restricted time window. All right, I know you liked that episode. If you did, check this one out.